Shanali Bors, a pleasure to have you here in London. How are you? Very excited to be here, Haroon. You know, I absolutely love The Sky is Pink, as I was just telling you. And I've not watched it once, but I've watched it twice. And it hasn't even released yet. So I feel very privileged, very honoured to be among the, the few who have seen it so far. Uh, but actually, I was asking you just now if you can still sit through the whole film. And you said you did last night. I had to watch it with the London audience. London is such a special, important part of this film. I really wanted to experience how that audience is going to respond. How is it every time you watch it? Do you notice or, or see or feel something new every time you sit through it yourself? So uh, after a while, I start getting into it and then I myself laugh and respond. But for a good first 30 minutes, I'm just really watching the audience watch it. And so I'm like, laugh now okay now they'll feel emotional like you know i know every point as it's coming and you're just waiting and you're like ah and then after a while you just get into it yourself and i did i do get into it and then i laugh and respond to it as well what for you was it about this story that made you want to actually develop it i think i loved the fact that they had this approach to life which when they knew that their child was going to die that they said that you know it's every moment of life that counts it's not about uh, feeling grim about the death. All of us are going to die, so anybody can die at any time. So let's focus on life and living every moment. I love that outlook. I love their romance. They met when they were 16, and even past her death in their you know, mid-50s, they're still going strong and so attached. And I, I wanted a unique love story, because usually in Hindi cinema, we just do look at people who are in their 20s, you know. So I love that, you know, you're going through a messy marriage and yet you love each other and you're romantic. So the difference was when they approached me, they wanted it to be about Aisha. And I came back to them and said, I'd like it to be about you. Like, she's telling your story. You know, you mentioned that you watched it with a London audience last night. You also watched it with a Toronto audience a couple of weeks ago. How does the love and appreciation that you're receiving feel for you? I mean, uh, it hasn't had a general release yet. We're sitting here a few days before its general release and already such an outpouring of love. Haroon, it's the most overwhelming, most rewarding, most the bestest thing in the world. You know, I... Uh, it's such hard work to make a film. It's really hard work and this is this is what it is. And actually, once it's in release, we don't actually get to interact with audiences, unfortunately. So it's film festivals that are very precious for me. I'll never not, I've come here only for 24 hours just to watch it with the London audience and interact with the London audience for that very reason. And in TIFF, because there was an audience of 2,000 and my lead actors were with me, so I couldn't really interact with the audience. So here I stood for an hour and a half and people kept hugging me. Even later as I was sitting to dinner in the restaurant, they kept coming up to me. It was the best, one of the best evenings of my life. One of the uh, most likeable features of this film is that you balance tragedy and comedy really well together. There is a lightness in each scene that deals with death as well. How did you strike that balance? Because even though for you, death is something that you've come to terms with, it's something that you've dealt with, for many people it's still a taboo, it's still a stigma around death. But exactly, and that's what I wanted to smash. I wanted to smash that myth, and I sort of like to do that in my cinema. You know, with, with Amu, it was smashing the myth that the 84 genocide was a riot. Uh, you know, with, the, uh, with uh, Margarita, with the straw, it was the fact that if you're disabled, you're not going to have sexual desire. And with this, it's that, you know, something that is taboo, like death, which all of us are going to face, should not be taboo. And it's something that we should be comfortable with. So, yes, as you said, I myself was comfortable and and actually joyous around death, and I wanted to bring that into my film, even though the real Chaudhry family are not in the same place as me. Shanali, did you ever consider making this as a long format series? Because, you know, when I see the film now, uh, there is a lot of time jumps, right? You go from 96 and 97 to at one point 2003, then 2009, then 2013. It moves across a large period of time and there's a lot going on. Not only is there the story of this girl who's passed away as a teenager, but you also at one point touch on racism in the United Kingdom in, in the 90s. You also touch on the marital issues between a couple who's who have dealt with the loss of their child. Did you ever consider a long format series? No, I didn't, but I think it's a very good point that this this could, you know, ultimately become, there's so many aspects you could delve into, so many characters whose trajectories you could follow. 
but when they approached me they also wanted a film and I think um, as a filmmaker like there's nothing as exciting as making a film for the big screen out there for audiences so that there was not even for a second that I thought that it should be uh, any other form of uh, media. You've always said that you were given your dream cast with this film as well in Priyanka Chopra and Farhan Akhtar. But did you ever worry that you'd be burdened by their stardom? You know, when you have a star like Priyanka Chopra or a star like Farhan Akhtar, the audiences have certain expectations of them too. I didn't have it with uh, thinking about audience at all. I was terrified and intimidated that these stars are not going to give themselves up to me as actors. And I was very clear that I... I'm that kind of director, it needs to be intense performances and I need to get that. So I was worried that, am I going to get that? Did I make a mistake like before I got into workshops? And not at all, like I completely managed to have them work with me as actors and that's why you see those performances. I didn't even think for a second about the audience, I never do. I make a film for myself, it has to work for me. And if I can unstar them and make them work for me, then I'm confident about my audience. On anything to do with the film, I'm confident of my audience. What is the difference? You know, because you have worked with somebody like a Kalki Kekla, who is a big name in her, in her own right, but she's not a Priyanka Chopra. What is the difference between working with somebody who is a star like that compared to somebody who's known for being a director's actor who, who has done all sorts of maybe experimental work? Yes, it's, it's a really good question you're saying because with Kalki, in fact, I worked for almost six months for her to get into Lila's role and it was completely an immersive experience. With Priyanka, I knew I had very few days. Like, I had, I had insisted on 10 days, but that's all I had. And then the challenge was, uh, you know, dates, like getting shooting dates. So with her, I knew that very fast I need to somehow make that deep connection that I had the luxury of time with uh, Kalki as well as with Konkona Sen Sharma and Amu. And in the very first meeting we did that and it was about death, about her father's death, about my son's death, just immediately bonding, not with a plan, not with the thought that, oh, how am I going to establish this bond? It just happened very naturally and organically the first time I met her in New York when she said yes to the script. And thereafter, when, once you cross and speak about something so precious to people and so uh, sensitive and fragile and you can form that relationship, then you can really get connected fast and you can go deep into them. And so she actually channeled my relationship with my son hugely, not her relationship with her father, right? So if you're, if you're, so many actors say like if you're, you have to cry and you may go to some place in your own self. So interestingly with Priyanka, she does this. She likes to take it from somebody else, like not from her own experience. So that made it actually uh, a unique and amazing experience. Is that though a distressing situation for you to be in? Because even though you've said many times, and I don't want you to repeat uh, things that you've said in other interviews, but you know, you dealt with the loss of your son when he was a teenager. And in this film, Priyanka calls her son Ishan by the, the nickname that you called your son. When you're hearing that kind of blur between reality and fiction, is that a distressing place for you to be at as a filmmaker? I was euphoric. So the first time that she, she had a breakdown and I went to her, I said, oh my God, that was just a brilliant performance. It's the first time she had a very tough scene post Aisha's death. And um, she said, babe, I, I, it's all from Ishlu. Like I, the, what, the words you spoke to me when we first met about Ishan and, you know, the firefly, because uh, at his, uh, you know, on the day of his funeral, some people came to me and, and, and they gifted me a firefly and said he's like a firefly. She, she really, like it was months later that we were doing the scene, like she remembered the firefly and I was so happy. And then another time also, like she just hugged me and said that, you know, I know now what it means to lose a child because she got so into my skin. I loved that. You know, Shanali, you became a filmmaker for the love and passion of filmmaking, storytelling. But when you're telling a story where there is a family, a real life family, who, who have their hopes on this being a, a sort of vindic vindication almost of their daughter's life, a, a kind of validation for their daughter's life. Does that suck the fun out of filmmaking when you know that at the end of the day, there's going to be a real family who have lost their child, who will watch this film and will either approve or disapprove of what you've shown of their family. Does that suck the fun out of filmmaking? No, not at all. I mean, I feel uh, with Amu itself, because I was very conscious, you know, there are real, so it may not be a specific family, but I'm telling the story of something so deep and real, which has affected, you know, thousands and thousands of people of the Sikh community, right? The responsibility is massive. Um, so here, I, I, I knew that they had the confidence in me. So there is a responsibility, but right from the script phase, they love the script. So I knew that they're going to love the film. 
you know, but you still feel nervous, but the fun doesn't go. I felt nervous. I feel nervous of you watching it, of anybody watching it. But then I also have some confidence, like especially because they love the script so much. So they, I knew that there's nothing in there that they're not going to be comfortable with. London is really a key character, more than a setting, but a key character in The Sky is Pink because the Jodry family spent so many years here uh, working on treatment for their daughter. How did you go about setting the film in London? And talk to me a little bit about the shoot here. So we were very, uh, I was very clear I wanted to be as authentic as possible. So we spent months getting the permission from Great Ormond Street Hospital because that is where Aisha was saved. That was huge in their lives. And so I didn't want to do any other hospital. And for, for a while, it seemed we wouldn't get it. But then we got it. So th these kinds of things were very important. Sunrise Radio. Sunrise Radio, huge, huge part of the film. You know, so I wanted it to be Sunrise Radio. So we wanted to get the permission that we need to call it. Because in the beginning, you're always told. And for a while in the scripting, it was that I have to change the name of the hospital. I have to change the name of the Sunrise Radio show. Because it's a fictional film. And, you know, there can be lawsuits, anything, people. And I really fought hard for these two things um, so yeah basically London is a big character in the film and you've seen it it's so connected with the community here and really lovely to be here how much research did you do uh, into the experiences of the British Asian diaspora because the film also deals with how these parents are working double shifts you know one's coming in from working the day uh, Priyanka's character is getting ready to go and do a night shift the kind of uh, helplessness that these parents went through while they were living in London how much research did you do in getting those nuances right no no research I know this really well I've lived in the U United States myself I'm very familiar and close with the struggle of the immigrant community from the times before even making AMU, just of my uh, activism days, uh, living myself, uh, you know, in another country, which is, you know, very similar experience of what South Asians experience, whether in the United States or the United Kingdom. And of course, their own details, right? So her saying that she worked in a pharmacy. So I was not going to put her in some other thing, like she worked in a pharmacy, because she had to work all night. So those details, you know, getting that from her. And um, him, he told me like he, it was this big industrial kitchen. Um, and he was used to very, he was on the customer side of the pizzas. He was, you know, uh, working with pizzas. And he was on the customer side in India. So he's very like one-on-one -on -one friendly with people, Niren. And so it was very difficult for him to just go around and just test the pizza's temperature. Yeah. So those details came from what their specific actual work was when they were going through this, right. you know. You know, you are about to go to the U.S. and have a promotional trial there, a trail there as well. You're going to be promoting the film in America with Brianka as a general release over there. Are you hoping to capitalize on Brianka's stardom in the West to try and make this film reach a wider audience? She is a co-producer on the film as well. I'm not going with her. She herself is flying out today from India. She's on Jimmy Fallon's show. She's on the Today Show. So some talking about shows. this film. Yes. That's amazing. Yeah, it is. That's huge. <laughs> it is. It you know, is. not every Hindi film gets an opportunity none, like that. None has got till now. Yeah. So it's huge. I had to just cut the promos that will go. So it was so exciting for me that, you know, the one minute of the film that's going to go on the Fallon show and Today show, that's the, it, it, it is very exciting. Again, I, not the producer, so I don't think like that, you know. I, I'm just about my audience loving it. So it's great that, yes, Priyanka Chopra's name should count and get us a bigger you know, number of people going to the box office to watch the film. I don't worry about the box office, though, to be very honest. I'm, I just, like, the you know, BFI and Is shit. it hard to be like you, Shanali, <laughs> in, a, in, a, in a place like the Hindi film industry where so much is, so much is uh, kind of uh, emphasis is put on box office and collections and marketing and strategy? Is it hard to just be a creative mind wanting to make a good product? Yes, it is. I mean, I've struggled to make my first two films. I've had to produce them because because of the box office. People love the scripts, but they didn't want to touch it. Nobody wanted to produce those. Uh, Viacom came in with just half the money, and it was a struggle. With this film, you know, Sid and Ronnie, two major producers, backed it. So that's amazing. Now, if this fails at the box office, it'll continue to be a struggle for me. But I will continue to make my cinema. It is not going to phase me. You know, because um, our films are going to live past our deaths. You know, it's a legacy you leave behind. You have to do what you believe in. And I believe this, these films are great. Now, if the box office is composed of people who are just watching, you know, certain kind of just, you know, entertainment, which I find like not good. And I'm, even if you pour money over me, I can't make that. <laughs> I'm just not going to. I'm not going to stop making my cinema.
finally, I have to ask you, you know, I can talk about this very matter of factly because I've seen it. But why don't you talk to the audiences who haven't seen this film yet and who might worry that this is a bit too serious? Because I know it's not. It's not a serious film at all. But you can see why people might think it is. Essentially, it is about the death of an 18 year old. You know, there is 18 or 19 was she when she passed 18. it. 18. It, it is essentially about the death of an 18 year old. And for many people, that might not be something they want to go and spend money on and, and spend their time on. So can you sell it to them? Well, firstly, it's not about the death of an 18 year old. Right up front in the beginning of the film, she says that, you know what, I'm dead, get over it. It's not a tragedy, and nor is this a ghost story. And she's telling this, and she has this very caustic, sarcastic relationship with death, which immediately puts you at ease. Now, watching it now in two uh, countries, uh, Toronto and here, the laughter was louder, as loud as the tears. The tears do come at some point, but they're good tears, they're healing tears. People love also having a good cry, but the laughter is actually amazing because a lot of the film you laugh because it's a very entertaining and engaging film. It is about Priyanka and Farhan, their romance as Aditi and Niren. It's their love story, it's them as this family, they do all kinds of crazy things together. So I would say this is a really entertaining, engaging, engaging family drama that people should go and watch. Amazing. Shanali, it's been a pleasure. Thank you so much. Thank you, Haroon. Thank you. Asian Network.